All right then, my friends. So at the minute, if we take a look at our data in the pizzas table, we are capturing three extra properties, the type, the base, and the name. But I want to add a fourth one, and that is going to be toppings. So any extra toppings the user wants to add on. Now, when I start talking about toppings, I'm thinking there's going to be several values, a list of values. And to me, that screams, okay, well, an array of data. Now, in MySQL, we can't store an array as a data type, but what we can store is a JSON string, which can represent an array. So what I'm going to do is go to our migration file for the pizzas table, first of all, and I'm going to create a new column. And this is going to be of type JSON, and it's going to be called toppings. So let's add that on. So table, first of all, and then it's going to be JSON, and then in here, toppings. Now, by the way, if you want to be able to store JSON in your database table and you're using XAMPP and MariaDB, you need a modern version of MariaDB for this to work in Laravel. So make sure that you do install the latest version from the XAMPP website. Otherwise, you will get errors when you do this. So anyway, now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is roll back all those migrations. And yes, we will lose our data, but I'm not bothered because we're not in production. And then I'm going to migrate again. So in fact, let's just do this all in one swoop. So we'll say PHP artisan migrate. Oh, make sure we save this file. So migrate. And then I'm going to say refresh. So remember, refresh takes it back to the beginning. It puts everything in a down state and then runs all the migrations again. So press enter and hopefully it's going to run all that. So if I now come over here and refresh, then we don't see any data anymore, but we do see this extra column right here. So we have that column. Now we need to capture the data on the form right here. So what I'm going to do is use checkboxes to do that. So let me come to the create view over here. This is where it is. And I'm going to do for this a field set. And inside this field set, I'm going to do a label first of all. And that is going to be, doesn't need a four, this one. That is going to be extra toppings. All right, so we need to now add a series of input boxes. So I'm going to say input. The type is going to be checkbox. And the name is going to be equal to toppings, right? Because remember, we use the name attribute right here when we get the data inside the controller. So we'll need that. All right, so back over here. Now let's say the value of this one is going to be mushrooms. So if a user checks this, then toppings is going to contain mushrooms. And I'm also going to put some text next to this. So I'll say mushrooms so they can see what they're actually putting a tick in. So BR and let's do another one. So what I'm going to do, in fact, is just copy this a couple of times and this one right here is still going to be checkbox. It's still toppings. Each one of these is toppings because at the end of the day, they are all toppings. We don't need separate names for them. They're all going to go ultimately inside the toppings column. But the value for each one is going to change. So instead of mushrooms, we'll do peppers. Instead of mushrooms down here, we will do garlic. And then let's do olives. And we also need to update these things. So peppers and garlic. And then finally, olives. OK, so before we do anything, let me now come over here to the pizza controller. I'm going to comment out this save thing. But what I am going to do is try to capture the toppings. So I'm going to output those to the terminal. So to do that, I'm going to say error underscore log and then remember we use request to get the data from the form and the name of the name attribute we want which is toppings now what do you think is going to happen here let's save that and refresh over here and now we can see all of these different checkboxes if i do mushrooms peppers and garlic and then order the pizza it still works but if i go now to the other terminal we can see the only thing it outputs is garlic and that's because it's only grabbing the last one I do, which was garlic right here. If I check olives and uncheck mushrooms, 
order pizza, then it's going to output olives. So it's not outputting an array of values. It's not capturing all of them. It's just capturing the last one. So how do we tell Laravel that, look, we want to capture all of the ones inside an array that the user selects? Well, all we do is add square brackets at the end of the name over here. And that tells Laravel that, look, we want to store whichever values that a user selects inside a toppings array. So if I save this now and try it out again, let's order a pizza and let's do peppers, garlic and mushrooms, order the pizza and we get an error. And that's fine because it's proving that this is working. It expects parameter one to be a string and we've given it an array. So we can't put an array inside this function over here. I tell you what, instead let's return that value so we can see it in the browser. So let's get rid of that and return here. I'm just gonna comment out this dude, save it and let's go back to the form and refresh and let's do this again order the pizza and now we can see we get an array so we're capturing now an array of data cool so we've done two steps so far we've now added this field this column into our table and we've migrated that it's expecting json remember not an array and we've also added the fields to the form and we're capturing those right here as well in fact what we could do now is say okay well, let's add the toppings property to this pizza as we have done with the other properties. So pizza toppings is equal to request toppings. So now we're assigning the array to this property. But if we save this now to the database, it's going to try to save an array into a JSON field and that's not going to work. So we need to somehow transform this thing right here into json now we could do that manually inside this controller action but there's a dead simple way to do this if we go to our pizza model so let me open up app and let's go to pizza inside here we can add in a property and that property is called casts and what that does is take an array as a value and any column that we pass inside there, it will cast into a certain data type back and forth. So let me do this and then I'll explain it. I'm going to say protected and then it's called casts. So dollar sign casts and set it equal to an array. And inside this array, we want to take the toppings column and we want to make sure that it's cast into an array when it comes from the database. So when we're working with it in our application, it's an array. So if I save this now, what it's going to do is when we try to save something to the database, it's going to take the array and it's going to automatically turn it into a JSON string. Now, when we get that JSON string back from this toppings, then it's going to turn it back into an array again so that we can cycle through that easily in our code. So this automatically does that casting for us, okay? Hope that makes sense. So let me save this now. I think that's all the moving parts done. We might get an error because I might have forgotten about something. So I'm gonna refresh over here and let's add a new pizza. So my name's Sean. Can I spell it? No, not even my own name. And I like the veg supreme with a garlic crust. I'm gonna go with garlic and olives as the extra toppings. Order the pizza. This works right here. Let's go to the database and refresh this view. And we can see now we get toppings, garlic and olives, and the rest have been captured as well. Now, if we go to forward slash pizzas, what it's gonna do is grab all of the pizzas, right? And output them. Now there's only one at the minute, so hopefully it will still grab that pizza. Yeah, we can see it. We're not outputting the toppings here, but that's absolutely fine. If we go to the one with that ID, which is one, then we should see the details of that pizza as well. And we do veg supreme and the base is garlic crust. So why not on this page right here, why don't we cycle through the toppings as well and output those? So let me go now to the view, which is show, that's for the individual one. And what I'm gonna do now is another paragraph tag right here and this is going to have a class as well, just in case we style this later on. So toppings, or you can style it if you wish. And I'll say extra toppings. All right. And then below that, we'll do a UL because it is going to be a list. And inside here, we want to output an LI tag for each individual topping. 
So what we're going to do now is cycle through the toppings. Now remember, because we did this in the pizza model, when we get that JSON string back of the toppings, it's going to cast it into an array. So already it's going to be in the right format for us to cycle through. So we don't need to do anything else. We just need to now use a for each loop. And inside that loop, I want to grab the toppings stored on the pizza that we take into this view. Remember, if we go to the pizza controller inside the show method right here, we are passing in a single pizza with that ID. So I'm going to go back to show. I'm going to grab that pizza. Then I want the toppings property because we're going to cycle through that in this for each. Now I'm going to say each one is going to be referred to as a topping. So as not to ping, topping. And then inside we'll say we want an li tag and each li is going to output the actual topping. So just do curly braces and topping. Then we need to close our for each. So end for each. Whew. So I think that should work. Let me save this and refresh over here. And now we see those toppings. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is try going to the home page and then going to the form again. I'm going to try one more. So Luigi and the type is going to be Hawaiian. And we'll go with thick crust and Luigi wants absolutely everything on his pizza. So now if we go to forward slash pizzas, we should see both of those. First of all, yep, we do. And if we go to forward slash two, which should be the ID of the new pizza we just added for Luigi, we can see all of those toppings on that page as well. Awesome. So this all works. So that, my friends, is how we work with checkboxes arrays of data and storing JSON in the database. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how we can remove records from the table.